Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey, I realize it may not be the morning where you are right now, but it's the morning here. It's June, June. Why do I keep saying that? <laughs> it must be, I just have a hopeful desire for June to get here. It's January 17th, day before the average coldest day per year here in Canada, January 18th. But it's not cold. It has not been that cold this winter here. But apparently the weathermen are promising colder weather is coming. So, what about this radio? I think today what I want to focus on is the tuning, uh, the mechanical tuning uh, system in the radio. So, uh, there's two primary issues. One is um, this. I'm turning the dial. There is room in the capacitor to turn. But the pointer's not moving. I can go this way, but going the other way. Now that sounds like it made it all the way that time. And it did. Okay, so it's not a... Oh, it's not a... It's not a big problem. <laughs> Seems to have fixed itself. So... Um, the other problem, which I think is much more interesting and rather bizarre, is the pointer itself. When the chassis is in the cabinet, this is invisible. You cannot see it. So here's the cabinet. Here's the dial numbers. And you can see the bottom of the chassis is the same as the bottom of this piece of sliding metal, slide metal here, that this is riding on bottom here is going to be right about there. This metal is about the same width as this. Same height rather. This guy's sliding on the metal in behind here where you can't see it unless unless you tip the radio way up and look. But this is going to be sitting, you know, on a counter somewhere. You tend to look downwards at it. So this can't be correct. Now this guy has come with a black bar hand painted on it. That's probably black magic marker. And a pointer completely invisible in, when, when it's inside the radio. Why the heck would they do that? Well, I don't think they did that. I think somebody did that. I don't think the manufacturers did that. I've also noticed the string appears to be replaced. And it's under a lot of tension. This, this spring is providing tension in the string, and it's a lot. It's very tight. Also, the string looks brand new and it looks a little thin. All these things are telling me somebody else that the string broke. I'm going to guess the string was lost, the pointer went with it, Someone came along and has repaired this radio from terrible state. These things were all broken here. He's glued them all back. He's tried to bring this thing back onto the planet. Succeeded for the most part. But when it came time to deal with the pointer, this is my guess, he's grabbed the pointer from another radio and kind of fitted it in um, as best he could. Now I actually have some photographs of what this radio is supposed to really look like. And that's going to reveal something, so let's go check that out. Okay, this is Radio Museum. I'm a member of Radio Museum. And here is the radio that's on my bench. And if you look, there's the pointer right there. There it is there. So, what's up with this? showing right there. It has to be what I what I think it is. Somebody has replaced the string and the pointer and the whole shot and the best they could do was make something move in behind the window. You'd have to look up to kind of see it. Not so good. I gotta do something about that. What's that? I don't know. Okay, let's start by loosening this up a little bit. Make sure it turns a little freer. Now, when you're turning the knob, you're feeling the 
back pressure or uh, frictions that are in the string system, the pulleys, the big wheel and the capacitor up here. But the first one, and the one that's often the worst one, is the knob itself. The, the knob itself. Not exactly the knob, but the, uh, the piece in here. Now that, that back pressure would be something you would still feel in your hand, but it wouldn't be coming from the transport, the string, none of that. It's just coming from there. So we're going to start with that one. And the way we're going to do that is tip, tip the radio up. Okay. So here is the back side of it. Surprisingly long. It comes all the way out to here. Looks like it just has a simple uh, E-clip there. This is where there's going to be some tension. I'm just going to put a little bit of WD-40 in here. Try anyway, just a little wee bit. Yep, that's a little wee bit. Okay, and I feel no difference from that. Quickly looking for one sec here. So, so what I'm feeling when I turn this is not from here. It's got to be from the rest of it, and it's a lot. There's, there's really fighting me to turn this. The next most likely place for drag, would that be the right word for it? It's in the tuning capacitor itself, which is a little awkward on this radio. Let me tip this up this way. Here we go. There we are. This guy here, he gets running on a couple of bearings. Usually in the front, just behind the wheel here, is some ball bearings, which I can see right back in here. There's a bearing at the back, but it's a point bearing, and I doubt there could be very much uh, back pressure from it. I'm going to try to get this back there. I cannot see what I'm doing. These uh, spray cans are really stupid. As you push down on the button, you relocate the uh, nozzle because the nozzle's on the button. It's very hard to make these hit the mark. I don't think that's going to cause tension. Now there's something else in these capacitors that needs to be, that should be uh, cleaned or lubricated and that's a little hard to believe. This part that moves here, this moving part, has to maintain a very good ground connection to the chassis. And it does that with the spring-loaded drag fingers, I could call them, I guess are usually located down in this area. Yep, I can see it there. If these, uh, if this grounding is intermittent, tuning the radio has weird, weird effects. Okay, it makes it jump around a little bit. Okay, I don't think anything has come loose here. Now there is a lot of tension on the string. 
and that's only going to serve. I mean, after a certain point, you, you, you know, ex, excess tension only serves to make this harder and harder to turn. Does it feel any better? Hard to say now. And you put the knob on here, you, you get a lot more leverage than what I'm doing. So by doing this, I'm sort of making myself more sensitive. Now I, I could feel this. I turn. I could feel that I was turning this and this thing wasn't moving. The string is slipping. These things also, ooh, what was that sound? These things tend to slip in one direction only. The other way they they, they, they tend to, to, to work better. And that's because of the way the string is looped around right in here. We should take a closer look at how that's done there. Let me just boost the light in my shop. And we'll switch to the uh, other camera. Now, I call this my close-up camera, but it's really just another webcam that happens to focus very, very closely. And I think the autofocus is on. Let's just leave it like that and see if we can see if it'll come on camera. Yeah, maybe the autofocus is not on. This is good. This is fine like this. So, you see that spool that the string is going around? Like there's only once, twice around, and then where does it go? Out the bottom. Comes out the bottom, comes all the way across, up through this pulley, and then back. And then we have the slider connected to it there. And it goes all the way back, heads up this little pulley. This is a complicated one, there's a lot of pulleys. Heads up this pulley, gets into that pulley gets onto the big wheel. Uh, the other side coming off, going around this pulley. Now, would, would these be sticky? Well, you know, there's so much tension in this string. This is really over tense. It doesn't need to be this tense to do its job. That every little thing, I think, is adding a touch of, uh, a, a touch of uh, friction. And there's a lot of them. One, two, three, four. That's a lot. <laughs> four. Four is a big number today. So I can either loosen off the spring on the theory that this is over tightened. It sure does look over tightened. It could be an easy way to do it. You see, you know, even this tab appears to be bent back. Look, look, this is what those tabs normally look like. They look like that. But this one, this one's bent back. It's so much pressure in the spring. This looks like a replacement spring. So I think what happened in this radio is the entire string disappeared, pointer and all. And uh, this guy put this together as best he could. He's just got too much tension here. But you see these holes? Well, that's a series of holes. So you can adjust the tension of the spring. All you gotta do is just make it go down in the hole there. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, looks like the first hole is pretty much the same. This distance have changed the tension a lot. This, this, you know, the spring is only pulled, I don't know, a quarter inch or something. But let's try that. I'll drop it in here and see if everything gets better. Now this, is this shaped? I think it's shaped just right to do that. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Now as soon as I let go of the spring, as soon as, soon as I disconnect the spring here, I'm the one who'll be, be pulling the tension. It could be an awful lot. It could be more than I'm figuring on. Get my tools ready here because once we start, we can't stop. I guess I could rehook it back on here. So I'm going to use my hook tool. I'm going to hook this. Lift it up and off. Well, it's not that much. Put it in here. Put it in here. He says, put it in there. I thought that was going to go easily. tension will still be pulled in the string. I've just released it here. It won't have released all the way through till I turn the dial a little bit. Let's do that. We'll see what happens. This might... I see, I see another problem with the way this is done. Okay, I, I can't make it go now back at all. So 
well, releasing tension hasn't uh, helped the situation, it's made it worse. Now you know why the guy hooked this up here to get maximum tension. I was going to say, the way this is wound around here, when you turn it this way, it pulls the string tighter and it's able to, draw, to, to move. When you turn it the other way, it's actually uh, loosening the string here and you're losing grip completely. So now the tension is uh, more like most radios. And it's still high. This is still high tension. Okay, our next step then is to try to relieve any uh, friction that might be happening in these four pulleys. As unlikely as that is, it's very unlikely. So I don't want to be spraying WD-40 on those things because it's going to get on the string and that's not going to help any. So I need to apply some oil here in a more gentle way. So I have this bottle with this, and this is a uh, like a syringe type needle on the top. And it delivers oil, but man, is it ever difficult <laughs> to get oil out of it. But it will just be a little tiny amount. Perfect. There. Do the same here. I can't, I won't get it on the string this way. Tiny amounts is all that's needed. I, I, I can't imagine this is going to help, but we got to do it. We've got to eliminate it as one of the possible problems. So the next level of difficulty here uh, with this arrangement is uh, the very thin string. Now a lot of these radios have a much thicker string. The, the string I use is this white stuff. It's, it's, it's thicker than this. This is, this is close to thread here. This is a little thicker, but the, the string commonly used, and I don't know if I can grab some right now, look around to see if there's any laying around. Well, here's some right here. <laughs> I went into my uh, vast collection of spare pointers and got the one I have. Um, well, this isn't particularly thick string. These strings are special strings too. They do not stretch. They have no springiness in them themselves, which is really important. You can't use ordinary kitchen string on this stuff. You know, don't take the string off your turkey and put it on your radio. That's that's not a very good idea. So, looking for more of string. I thought I had another pointer laying around, but it won't matter anyway, I don't think. I don't think I can do anything with this. It's a little big for this radio. <laughs> but uh, I am looking, what I'm thinking about this is to glue a piece on the top of this that comes out and over and looks like that little triangle pointer that you saw in the picture. It basically, you can replicate what was there before. Um, can't be very big. You saw the pointer in the picture barely came down. Bar barely po poked out here. Because if it came down too far, you'd have a hard time getting the chassis out of the radio because the pointer is, is, is sticking on here. So I think that's the reason for the tiny, the tiny pointer. The little triangular pointer. Uh, for gluing it, I'd have to use epoxy, and uh, that's not something I'm going to rush into. But that's what I'm thinking right now. The other alternative is, don't worry about it. When you want to tune the radio, just tip it up so you can see the thing. Tune the radio. I mean, are you going to sit and tune this radio for an hour and a half? No, you're going to tune it to a station and leave it, and probably leave it there, kind of for good. And I believe the uh, owner actually said to me that was... That was her process. I mean, who, who, who wouldn't do that? You just... I see what's going on. There's a screwdriver under there. Too many tools on the bench. Why? So, the solution here. And it's on a bit of an unfortunate solution. Is the string has to be looped a, another time around this. Around this. Now that'll probably put enough grip on here. Let's, uh, let me say we take a really close look at that. There's, there's something worth looking at. And uh, I'm going to switch cameras and I'm gonna, I want to 
adjust the focus on this camera, so just bear with me a moment here while I get my computer to uh, talk to me a little bit. Okay, how about way down like this? Okay, so we get in pretty close to the wheel here. How about some light on that wheel? So I'm looking to see how polished the surface is in here. Now, believe it or not, the string is supposed to slide around on this thing. If you, if you look at the shape of it here, this is a very much almost like a V shape uh, with the cord in the middle. The idea of this is, and, and, and because you've wrapped the cord a couple times around, as, if this were a flat cylinder, as you turn this, the cord would travel down the cylinder. Some of these are made that way. They, they are wide enough the cord can walk back and forth, and they're not made in a U shape or a V shape like this one. They're just made flat, like a spool, just look like a spool. But this one is designed so that as you turn this, the string is sliding back into the middle. It's able to slide into the middle while at the same time being gripped enough to travel. Well, that sounds like some kind of knife edge arrangement. You gotta just get everything just right for it to work. There's just no grip here. Gripping that way, but not this way. So the unfortunate thing is replacing the string is a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, it's not uh, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> you, uh, you, you risk your emotional stability changing a string. And here it is on here. And it's a new piece of string. Again, another issue with this, the arrangement of it. Let's go back to the close-up camera here so you can see it better. I think maybe I'm just going to change the focus back a little bit so we don't be quite so close. Uh, I got an email asking what camera I'm using right now. What camera is this? This is a Microsoft Cinema webcam, uh, about a hundred bucks or something like that. Nothing particularly special about it, except it has this ability to to focus really close. Now there's another version of this, a step up, called the uh, Studio, Microsoft Studio. Uh, that's a higher definition camera than this one, but you can't focus this close. You can't. So this is actually the better camera for this kind of work. Well, there's two pulleys side by side. I didn't really notice that before. That's one. That's one pulley. How, how do they get the string going through it in two different ways? Let's make that turn. Okay, I'm not getting any action here. Hang on a second. There it goes. The situation has gone downhill since I released the tension. Oh, I want to see this move. Making sure the string is rolling through there, that there isn't some something's been done wrong here, and that looks like it's just fine. If I can't, if I can't, if I can't, <laughs> I'll have to replace the string and double up the turns in here. Put a put another turn in on here. Now, can I do it with this string? That's a good question. You can see this is knotted. So could I release, is there enough string here that I could unknot this, release enough, loop it around the dial here? The other difficulty is you, you can't, you know, to loop it around, I, I literally have to have the end of the string here uh, to fish it around. Otherwise, I have to pull a loop through this hole here, out over the knob and back in. That's a huge amount of string. That's, uh, 
That's two and a half inches of string, or two inches of string. I get two inches of string here. So let's suppose I release it here. And then pull the slack. I may be pulling the string down towards the end here. Well, it's got a lot on the spring side too, eh? Well, not a lot. Look at the knot he tied there. <laughs> wow, that's a monster knot. I have to let the string go somehow. And then with the slack, either fish it all the way down, down here, just let it all come out, and then fish it around, put it all back, or somehow pull it through around the knob and back in again to get another loop in there. Uh, the, these things are, are in do not rush into something like this because you can easily end up in a far worse situation than right now. Right now it's almost working. Another thing I could do is I could I could release the here's an idea I could release this end. Uh, gain some slack. Do the pull it through and over the knob thing to get another loop in here, which I have to think hard about to do that. I pull this back tight and it's going to end here instead of ending up here. Now what do I do about this gap? Get another spring. Just put another spring in here. So once you release all the tension on a string like this, it starts falling off everything. It falls off the wheels, it falls off of these things, it, it all goes ringy. So again, don't, don't rush into it. You need a good plan that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, a good plan and it's got to work. Yes, that's what a good plan is. Now look at the situation here. If you look at the angle of this, where the string is here, versus on this. Can you see the string is casting at an angle? If you look straight down on it, you can see see the string in its angle. It's almost ready to pull it off the pulley. Now, having, now see, when I get to here, this angle is getting kind of severe. My guess would be the original slider uh, came out the back further, so the st string straightness was maintained. Let's go down to the other end. Okay, I'm going to have to kind of manually do it here. Get down there. There we go. By, by manually, what I'm doing, I'm turning the big wheel with my hand. Okay, now we're down here. We'll see what's going on. Okay, sort of the angular problem. It's not quite so severe, but it's there. He's glued this to the string. Is that what that is? Oh my gosh. See if I can just pull this off and take a look at what, what he's done here. Well, not there. Not, not out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, out in the middle. Not, not at the ends. In the middle. In the middle. How come it's bobbing up? So that's another thing that shows this is not the original. The original would be sitting like this. It wouldn't be up like that. That's what I mean. There's a lot to think about. Like the guy who did this, my hat's off to him. He did something that, that sort of worked. Maybe it worked well at first. Okay, pull this off. Can we can we see what's going on? Come on. I would not recommend gluing these to the string. i got to lift this way up, way up. Something's I'm going to turn it over. Just flip it over. There. Okay, now we can see a little better what's going on. So you see there's a string clamp there that just kind of bent down on it. It looks like the string is going straight through it. That's probably not the way it's meant to go. Usually the string is weaving through a couple of tabs. In fact, you see there's a tab sticking upwards. And what he should have done was you know, the string Enters the, there. There's three, three, uh, three pieces there where the string is is uh, gripped. Should it come in the way he did, then fish the string out and around that upper tab, and then back under the other loop, which you do when there's no tension on the string. 
Did he really glue it? Oh, now we can see. He's stuffed some hot glue in there, you know, hot glue you can get around that. But uh, the, the reason for this, the reason for not gluing it is part of the alignment process is to make sure this pointer is in exactly the right location. So you see there's lots of problems with this slider. But it's not causing the slipping problem. I'm willing to bet, get another loop on there, and we're in business. My hand's a little shaky this morning. And I'm willing to bet there's enough play here that I can release this one way or another, achieve what I need to achieve here, put this back together, and then extend this. I think the spring idea is ideal for the spring. I have lots of different springs I can put in here. I like that idea. But I'm not going to do it right away because you never rush into these things. Don't rush into them. What if I let more tension off? No, I can't, I can't imagine. Less and less tension, this is going to slip more and more at this point. It's just not got the grip. It's not got the grip. I think I've heard of people going in and trying to sand this thing to make it more grippy. I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, so what are we going to do then with the whole string situation sitting there? We kind of need to resolve it because without uh, resolving it, you cannot really align this radio because the pointer position on the string is critical to the whole alignment process. While we've got that camera here going, let's take a closer look underneath. So th there is a mystery here mystery is this wire sticking out. I saw that yesterday and then I just never commented on it again. It's, you know, we could guess it's, a, it's an original ground wire that went to the original capacitor. Now the capacitor's ground wire is coming right to the same, right to the same terminal. So the fellow who did it just forgot to get rid of this, or he decided to leave it for some reason we can't fathom, or I can't fathom right now. So that's all that is. It's a wire of no consequence. So looking at this capacitor, and then the way it's soldered here, uh, it's the kind of uh, quality of work I do. This is definitely a replacement. So, I, and I have to bet this is a replacement too. This little capacitor here is probably the bypass capacitor for the audio tube, the audio tube grid. These all look to be resoldered. Hey, could have replaced that. Hey, there's a cut wire there. Mm, that's a little odd. This is the uh, rectifier tube here. Uh, how can you cut wires off the rectifier tube? because you use this yellow one here, which goes right back to the, yeah. So what's happened is the capacitors come with different colored wires, the yellow one. And, uh, you know, he could have used the technique I use, where before you, when you do it, like one of the challenges here is keeping track of which terminal you're supposed to be hooking stuff up to while you're making component replacements. So when you cut a wire off, you don't cut it right off the terminal, you cut it back a little bit, leave a little tidbit of it there, because look what it's saying. A red wire went here. And that can be helpful in the uh, repair process. And maybe that's what that is. And he just didn't come back and clean up, clean up his tidbits. He did not do the tidbit cleanup. This is the outlet on the back of the radio. A chance, yeah, a good chance this outlet is switched. It may or may not be. Um, it, it would say on the back normally. Where's the back? The back is the back is on the back of the radio. We won't look at it right now, but this is this could be switched. It may not be switched. Could be that story I told about uh, you know you're gonna put the radio where you have a lamp plugged in. What are you gonna do with the lamp? Well, you can plug the lamp back in. It's got a bit of a a strand, a lot, some wild stranding there, but looks okay. So 
when you're working with stranded wire, the strands are very small. They can sneak around and touch stuff that you don't want them to touch. So somebody did a lot of work on this. It must have been, if the string was acting up, they must have been quite disappointed. And I can just imagine, he got the whole thing on there. there there's that integrated circuit piece I was talking about. He got the whole string on there, had trouble and said, oh, I'm not doing any more about this. I'm done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lead wires going into this thing. It's probably got three capacitors and three or four resistors in it. But we, we, the radio seemed to be working, so we're not going to sweat over that. There's another capacitor I imagine he replaced. 1792. Wow, this is an old, old radio. Holy smokes. Yeah, this is a four terminal device. You see the green paint? That's marking terminal, probably terminal number one. Look, there's numbers. You can see number four in there. That can be helpful sometimes, knowing that. I'm just looking around because I don't want to deal with the string right now. I am string shy. The strain relief is, uh, that's, yeah, is uh, self relieving. <laughs> it's, this isn't very good. Now this is done. But there's a lot of excess wire here, so you can tug away on this and probably not tug right on the connection. What's that cracked? Schmalz. Oh, that's the old lead wire. There's another tidbit left behind. Uh, yeah. yeah. It might be better to clean that kind of stuff up. There's another one of the yellow wire. Can you see how the conductor is sticking out? It's almost touching the ground there. The chassis. Let's see if I can get in there. And I'm looking at the image on the camera, so I don't know if I can manage this. Oh, there's quite a bit of clearance there. Quite a bit of clearance. They just leave it. You know the rule. The longer you look, the more you see. Pinex, never heard of that. Germany? Oh my gosh, this guy's got German capacitors. Yikes. Pinex. Wow, you're quite the radio now. You must be proud of yourself. Look at my German capacitors. Not those crummy Canadian ones, or the so-so American ones. And I'm only kidding about crumminess. I don't know that Canadian capacitors are crummy, and I don't know that German capacitors are better. <laughs> I should defend defend the Canadian capacitors. Okay, okay, I'm gonna stop for a while and ponder the situation here because I'm not too sure how to proceed. Either I gotta take a big bite and do the string thing or somehow carry on. And what is carrying on? Carrying on amounts to doing an alignment. Chances are the guy who did this work did an alignment. But we don't know that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go drink some coffee and scratch my head a little bit. Okay, I think I'm ready to try my solution. Now, I was talking about this string, but for all I know, it's this end I have to relief. i got to figure out which end is which here. Which end is the one I'm interested in. So I'm going to look at the string here coming off the wheel. Okay. These strings are twisted in here. I think it probably shouldn't be. We're coming up on the back. You may not know what I'm talking about. That's okay. It's hard to look at two strings right so close together. Hmm. Well, you know, one string is moving one way and the other string is moving the other. This, this, this string is coming off here. It's moving downwards. It's moving that way. I 
if I turn it this way. If I turn it this way, this string is being shortened and the wheel should be turning towards it. So I think this is the string. I release this part of the string. It's all one string. I release this end of the string. I should release the tension down here. Slack it off enough. I have to actually let the string drop all the way through. Wrap it around. Bring it all the way back up. Spring. I better. I better get the spring ready because uh, you, you have to. It's hard to stop these in halfway. So I'm gonna go fish out a string. A spring. Okay. So this is a general set of springs, not really intended for radios, but. Uh, Like that it might might be good. It comes in a couple different lengths here, the same kind of tension. Okay, let's see what happens with that on the, the radio. Careful, I almost knocked all those on the floor. Yikes. I'm guessing this string it's going to be consumed by two more turns around the uh, around here so no one, one, one more turn so it's about an inch so it's, it's going to come back to about here so this might be the right size right here I'm going to have an alternative here which is longer and then I can adjust the tension again by moving this one up and down because it's in the middle setting now. It has a range to, to operate. This one has a range too. Oh, I shouldn't be so concerned about this. Famous last words. Okay, am I ready? Now I'm going to practice without actually doing it. So I'm going to release the string here. I'm going to let it go back around here. It's going to fall off. Gonna, it's going to fall off of here. And I'm going to be able to pull it. Pull it here. This is really where I should pull it from. I pull it from, from down here. Pull the whole thing out. In the meantime, there'll be no tension left. So, so everything else is ready to will be ready to fall off. So, if I just turn the wheel a little bit this way then this guy's going to come loose, the string's going to drop. Uh, how bad can it get? I don't think it can get that bad. Okay, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Here we go. Hopefully, I've thought this through enough, it's going to be straightforward and easy. So first I'm going to grab the string. Oh boy, yeah. Right away. For me to pull this, I have to pull against this spring. The spring is way far away. How am I going to do that? Because I, I, now I need three hands. So we're, we're going we're gonna to lower the tension in the whole system here, he says. For some reason, he thinks that's a good idea. Come on out of there. Oh my gosh. To have an accident, you need four primary components. And I can't remember three of them, but one of them is energy. So anytime you're building up energy, like I'm tugging on this thing, an accident is around the corner. I can't get it to release here. Release, man. Oh, this turned out to be a... accidentally be doing damage to something else. Why don't I, why don't I, why don't I do this? I'll take the... I must be catching on something. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. More muscle power is not the right solution here. We must apply brain power to the spring. Do something brainy. This was not a good idea. 
how, how can it still be holding on? It's going to come off swing and go flying. Something's going to go flying. You don't want things to go flying. There we go. Wow, was that ever hanging on there? Now we just stick it on this one. There we go. Tension down. Did it by some chance start working? I mean, it shouldn't, right? It might. Based on my theory, it's going to get looser and looser. Yes, it seems to have gotten looser and looser. And I want the slack to get through the system. Show up over here. Good. Okay, all right, it's just going to drop. I said I'm going to pull it from here. Pull it from here. There it goes, it's the right one. string is staying fairly tight. Okay. Now look at what's under here, up and behind there. Pull it out. Now we gotta loop it around this part you can think about. Uh, the rate of the way it is. I want to maintain some tension on this all the time. Just a little bit. through. Now I'm in a bit of a jackpot here. Okay, I've cleared the jackpot. There we go. Now, calm, cool, and collected. We need this to be on the correct side. I believe it's this side. When I started this, I, you know, I didn't know what I was getting into, so I didn't think things through because I didn't know what to think. And wow, there's some horrible experiences doing strings. But now I've learned that you can't plan it enough ahead of time to avoid all kinds of ridiculous issues. Okay, so we got to get around this this wheel here. Can you come up this way. Can I grab it? No. So see the end of my tool there? It has a hook, it has a reverse hook. I call it the pusher puller tool. This has been extremely valuable in doing this work. And we'll hook it here, bring it through. Bring it up. This is going really well. And we're gonna get rid of the uh, the way the strings were crossed in here. I come up behind this pulley up here. Oh, you just do it like that. Sometimes when I'm doing these, rather than put them on the pulley, I'll put them on the shaft because they're less likely to fall off while you're working. And then later you can pull them up onto the pulley itself. And so, very good. We're lucky here because the knot is still inside here. It's close. So look at how long it is. Now, if you take that long spring which fell off onto my bench, where to go? Okay, I don't need to hold that. There it is. It's gone up under here. Not too strong. Perfect. Perfect. We have to open the ends here a little bit. So bending spring spring metal is tricky. It's it's designed to spring instead of bending. Okay, that's that certainly is open. That's ugly. And now we gotta open this one a little bit. Hook the string on it. Where's the end? You can, you, these springs, you can cut them, and then you just bend the last turn out, and you got a you got a hook, you got a loop. If you need to, I don't need to. Okay, we'll hook it.
hook it on the string. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get back on there. Now we need the hook. I'm going for the main hook. There you have it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Now this is still on low tension. This is on the maximum tension. Okay. Did, did we do this right? <laughs> this is where we find out. You blew it, man. You, you got something around the wrong way. Oh, wait a minute. We still have to pull it around the pulley up here. Okay. This will this will put some more tension into the string. There she is. And now, the big test. What happens when you do this? Oh, it's still slipping. What's that telling me? You need to look up close here and see if I got the string in the wrong way there. Is it doubled over itself? Doesn't, doesn't look right at the back. Let's look the other way. So the string seems to be coming off. Yeah, you see, it's, I think it's doubled over itself. It's very hard to see a string. Let me get more light on it. I should have been a little more careful with this. Ah, look at it. Yeah, it's doubling over itself. So, sorry about the camera work. What, what's happened here is I've... Uh, so it's coming out on the front side that, of that jumble over. And if we go on the other side and we look... See, it's also coming out the front side, so I had done it wrong. Good, good first try. No. But it shows that the whole process is, is quite, quite workable. So I need to undo it, release it all the way back, get it around the bobbin correctly. And to look closer at that, I should have looked closer. You got a 50-50 chance of success there, and I gambled. I assumed, yeah. Okay, my frame of mind is good, so I'm going to continue here. So I'm going to dismount the spring, take this off, take this off, pull that through there, pull this through here. So the string is coming up from down here coming around and traveling towards the back. And I thought that's what I, I did. Maybe it's just a short-term tangle-up. You know, it looks like a short-term tangle-up. Okay, let's bring in the uh, camera here. I can put the camera on my... Uh, where's the camera? It's got back here. special arrangement here. We need to look right in at that guy there. I feel like I'm taking a dental x-ray. Now don't move. Hold still. Okay, so the, the string that I am uh, working with is this part here. Oops, where'd my light go? It seems to be going up and over at the top there. Let's, let's work it a bit. Don't sink, Mr. Camera. Just hold still there.
right off now. I just don't have enough light here. sitting here and everything. Okay, so it's coming up from down here. It's going around. I can't I can't really tell what's going on. But it looks great. Okay. See maybe it just kinda hadn't worked out its own kinks here. I think it's perfectly fine. Interesting. I can pull on the... See my hand back here. I can pull on the string and apply, apply tension. And I know how much tension because I'm pulling it. And then I can feel the, the grip in the... It's good, but you need a lot of tension. But I can feel the grip is good. The grip is good. And the capacitor is all the way one way. I've got to pull it back the other. Everything falling off quickly, 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 quickly. Okay, so I think it's correct, and I think I, uh, I, I, I didn't. I was too impatient. Okay, calm down. Good. So we want it down here. whispering because I don't want to disturb myself. Okay, put down here. Pull back. Under here. Whoops, too many strings. Okay, pull it up this way. This one's not too tough because the uh, tension is maintained in the system. Uh, you know, for the rest of the string, it's not falling off everywhere. At least I, not that I'm aware of. Now we'll come up this way. You already found out, you just do this. Okay, we'll go right up like that. Come back over, all we're doing is putting it back together the way it was a moment ago. Put that like that. We get our my heavy cutters. Ah, they've gone somewhere. Somewhere else in my house. I'm going to cut part of this off. So I don't think I can bend it back. Can I? I don't know. I had it on here before, didn't I? I think I had it the other way around. Let's do it the other way around. Take that off. The shape of the loop is, is uh, what I'm concerned about sitting nicely in the, uh, oh, oh, sitting nicely. Did I, did I turn it back around and around? I don't know. Okay, on you go. There. I said it needed a lot of tension, but let's try it like this one. Just the same way it was a moment ago. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. She's got it. Having a spring at both ends can't can't hurt. You know what I've noticed while I've been doing this just now? Maybe you can see it in the camera. Maybe if I shine some light here, just the right way. Important thing to notice. Can you see that mark right there? There's another one down here. That says six. This says fourteen. 
And this is a number referring to this bracket, part number. There's a hole right there. There's a hole right here. There's a hole right here. There's another one way out here. These are probably all alignment marks in here. Hole, hole. This hole lines up with the 14. There's no, yeah, this hole lines up with the number 6. 6 probably stands for 600 kilohertz. 14 probably stands for 1400 kilohertz. During the alignment, you're probably supposed to dial this to those positions and perform certain adjustments. And they've hidden it on here. Okay, that's good. I'm glad I saw that. And now this speaker, I keep looking at it and thinking it's it's got a hole in it right here. Oh, it does. Yeah, it's invisible. When you look straight on, you can't see it. it look like that. Because I could always see something in the back here, I've been wondering. And I checked earlier to see if there was a tear in the speaker. And uh, I couldn't see it. But now I see it. Big tear. So this is easy to repair with just a little band-aid and some glue and stuff um, on here. Um, if you don't fix these things, these holes, and the speaker is trying to drive the air forwards and backwards. The air has an opportunity to go through this hole. Ooh, I'm going to make another hole if I do that. If it goes through that hole, that, that's, that's a flappy thing. You're going to hear kind of a funny, airy sound when the basis is operating. And it's only going to tear more as time goes by. So radial cracks in the speakers are very common. Um, why exactly this one's here, I don't know. It's there though. And while we have the radio up on its side, here's a couple of the adjustments that will have to be made later during the alignment, located on the side of the tuning capacitor. Just making observations now that are going to help me shortly. Shortly. Okay, um, so I'll leave it like this. If it continues to act up or it starts acting up, I have lots of room to apply more tension here and build up the tension in the string which will almost certainly correct any more slippage. Let's put this down where it's supposed to be. Kind of beating up the clock back there. And we're going to give this guy a run for a time. You know how they take cars out on the test track and, and they drive them stupidly fast and stuff? So this pointer is coming right up against this wheel. And the capacitor, now the capacitor has reached its limit, that's okay. Um, hey, I won't go back. There it goes. Uh oh, we got slippage problems here. Oh, you know what? I did not put it back on the wheel up here back on the pulley. So we'll do that. Now that will have increased the tension just a little wee bit. You hear the capacitor knocking at the end of its run. Go this way. problem here with the uh, the wheel has stopped the string is continuing <laughs> so wheel stop why did it stop because it's all the way no look at this this is coming right up close to here you know this is not in the right place on the string and he's glued it but he glued it with hot glue so you know that's hot glue is crummy this should probably be further over let's go back the other way See how close it comes here. Ah. Oh. Oh, I got new synapse connections in my head now. Maybe I'll get a new view of this. So this this is really causing a little bit of the trouble. Uh, the way this is designed, it's pulling the string too far forward. It's made for radio where the tracking pulling string is closer to the bar. This one, this one, if we look at this gizmo here, this is from another radio, of course. 
Look at the dimensions on it. Yeah, this is now, it's all glued up too. See, this is where the string is supposed to wrap around in this deal and it'd be enough grip. You don't want to glue these on because you have to shift them during the alignment. If they're not in the right spot and you've glued it, you've done something bad. It's also rising up. till the string breaks. Yeah, I think it's in the wrong position on the string. Now, how, how glued is it? Well, I can always warm this guy up until the glue gets soft and then pull the string through it. Or is it soft already? If you want to move one of these things on the string, you might, you might be inclined to grab the string to hold it still, like this. And then you want to move it this way on the string, so you start pushing. This is a problem way to do it. The, the, it's counterintuitive what you should do. If you want to move it on the string this way, you should grab the string in the direction you want to move it. Now this thing's glued, so I don't think it matters that much. But in the ones that are wound through, doing this will release the tension, and you'll be able to move the, move the guy. Can we move him? Doesn't feel like it. I'd say no. I'd say no. We can probably heat this up a little bit, soften the glue, and get the get the guy to move. But I, I can't move it now anyway. I don't know where to move it to. Or we could assume the pointer should be right on this dot, right on this circle. And it's not. Well, the other way it should be stopping. Oh, this doesn't make sense. It travels much further. Okay. Very good. Not quite good. Sort of good. Good enough. That's good enough. Good enough for today, I think. I'm going to stop now. That's enough terror for one day. So, uh, tomorrow, the name of the game here is going to be somehow aligning the radio. I'm going to have to start with positioning of the pointer and all that stuff. And we'll, we'll do the alignment on the radio. I think it's good enough for today. One big job done. Got some success under my belt. You know, that's going to give me some, uh, what's that chemical that's in your head? Forgot. <laughs> Apparently I don't have enough of it in my head. So, but this should make me feel better during the day, and I should leave it alone at this point. Uh, good idea. Okay, I'm babbling now. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully I get the whole thing done. See ya.